Good morning! It is 6 a.m. here in beautiful Vienna, Austria, and I am standing in front of the biggest, the best site in all of Vienna. I didn't intend to have the biggest, the best be my first vlog. I had thought that I would have come here last night for an early evening walk, but the aviation gods had something else in mind, and our 11 a.m. flight from Frankfurt was abruptly canceled, and we were put on the 9.50 p.m. flight to Vienna, which also experienced delays, so we didn't get to the Airbnb until 1 a.m. I woke up at 5.15. I intended actually this morning to do something completely different, but the thoughts of this place, it's my favorite, just drew me to it. So I thought I would take you all along with me. All right, are you ready? Are you ready for the reveal? I am standing in front of the magnificent Schönbrunn Palace. This was the summer residence of the Habsburg monarchy. It is simply magnificent. The building is absolutely stunning and along the sides of it and the back of it are massive gardens. And that is my favorite thing to do here in Vienna is come to Schönbrunn and take a nice walk through these gardens. So during these vlogs, I'm gonna talk about some of the cast of characters uh, throughout history that I think, you know, are interesting, important, fun little stories. And I'm also gonna hopefully give you all some tips so if you come to Vienna, you can make your visit a little better. So with that, let's head in. All right, so now we're heading through the gates into the Court of Honor, which is the front courtyard and the entrance to the Imperial Palace. So like I said, it's 6.30 a.m. And the reason I'm here so early, it just opened, is because in two hours, this place is gonna be swarming with tour buses and it gets very crowded. So I like to come right when the palace opens. And then I also like to come back after 5.30 or 6 p.m. when all the tourists have left uh, because the gardens are much, much more empty and much more enjoyable in my opinion. Now, if you do want to tour the interior of the palace, the state apartments are decorated in the style of Emperor Franz Josef and his Empress Elizabeth. They reigned uh, until, well, he reigned until 1916. So the monarchy ended shortly thereafter. So you get a glimpse into their lives if you come here. But the ticket center is right here to the left of the entrance. And the entrance to get in with your tickets is right over there. So I would plan ahead and I would plan to enter as soon as the palace opens so you can beat the massive amount of tour groups that are going to follow you uh, when the palace opens, and then you can get out and enjoy the rest of your day. But I would come, it's worth it to get up early, I'm really tired, but I would come when it opens so you can enjoy the gardens for a couple hours before you tour the interior. Okay, so now I just wanna share what, well, I think is a fun uh, little story. Um, and that is that the two most famous people of the 18th century had a brief encounter here at Schoenbrunn Palace. So let's just enjoy a little bit of scenery. And if you all have any guesses, uh, comment below. Uh, the sun is coming up, so that's east. So it is a little bit dark when I swivel the camera. Uh, that way, but you can see this spectacular building. Um, so th the meeting happened here in, or the encounter I should say, in 1762 when the six-year-old Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart came here to play a concert for Empress, Empress Maria Theresa and the Imperial family. And the story goes that Mozart had tripped and fallen and it was the Empress's youngest daughter, Maria Antonia, also six years old, who leapt to Mozart's rescue, pulling him to his feet. Overjoyed and to the delight of everyone in attendance, Mozart shouted at the young Grand Duchess, one day I'll marry you. 
Well, they would never meet again. In 1791, Mozart would die at the age of 35, and two years later, Maria Antonia, now the French queen Marie Antoinette, would lose her head at the guillotine during the French Revolution. Uh, Maria Theresa, I believe she had 16 children uh, with Marie Antoinette uh, being her youngest daughter. Uh, Marie Antoinette was married to uh, the French King Louis XVI. He was not king when they married, uh, but that union was established to uh, strengthen the bond between France and Austria. Maria Theresa was a savvy woman who married off most of her children uh, for uh, political purposes. And Maria Antonia was uh, no different. Um, she did allow one of her daughters, I can't remember which one, uh, to marry for love. Uh, but now we're gonna go right through there and I will pick you up when we are in the gardens. We are now on the west side of the palace in the massive gardens. Now, I would say over 90% of visitors to the gardens, they head right through there to the center garden. It is magnificent. Uh, we will see that in a little bit, but my favorite part of the garden is right behind me uh, because even in the busiest times, if you just head west, you see a lot of beautiful things and so many people don't head that way that you get uh, some, you know, peace, quiet, uh, privacy, um, and it's really nice to just come here and sit on a bench uh, and relax. So we are going to head down this way and then I will be back with uh, some of the scenery along the way. The morning sprinklers are going so I've already gotten hit by one so I'm gonna try to keep myself dry. Uh, but that is another great reason about coming here so early is it's really just gardeners and might see somebody running right there, uh, a few Viennese uh, exercisers, and uh, that gives you the gardens almost completely to yourself. I love all these little areas here. Of just there's just so many plants and flowers everywhere it is just beautiful and there's also so many benches uh, and so many places where you can find shade no matter what time of the day and I also love this little touch they do here in Vienna is um, this is a fountain obviously but what that is is it's a little board so the little ducklings don't get stuck in the pond uh, when mama directs them into the water. So in all the fountains in Vienna, they have these little bridges, I guess, uh, that little baby ducklings can crawl up so they can get out of the fountains. But we're gonna still head through there and uh, check out uh, the, the garden further along. I have made it to the western edge of the palace gardens. Uh, this is one of my favorite spots here. I hope the camera is doing this justice. Uh, this is the palm house uh, with beautiful manicured uh, gardens uh, in front of it. Um, people just don't walk down here. It's about maybe a 10 minute walk through the gardens once you enter the gardens to get down here. And if you come on a tour bus, uh, you're just, you're not really gonna have time to explore the gardens to their full extent. Um, and you'd have to make a choice. Do you take a tour of the interior of the palace and just see a small piece of the gardens or do you forego the um, tour of the inside and spend your time here uh, in the gardens, uh, but this is just one of my favorite places. I'm just gonna sit here and uh, catch my breath, and then I'm gonna take us to the center garden, which is absolutely breathtaking. Um, so yeah, I will see you all uh, back here just in a bit. I am a little out of breath, I'm very tired, and um, 
obviously somebody needs to get a little more exercise, but I will certainly uh, be doing a ton of walking here. I'm heading down one of the avenues in the gardens to the center garden, um, and there is this uh, beautiful garden uh, along the way as well. The sun's gonna be a little tricky right now. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out because it's just rising over there. Um, but I just couldn't do uh, this vlog uh, later because it would just be uh, way too crowded. So I am just enjoying myself in the early morning. Uh, you can see all the beautiful, uh, I was gonna say sprinklers, flowers here. I was uh, playing dodge them with these sprinklers uh, when I was walking through here, but uh, we are going to leave this section and we are gonna head right down there until we get to the center garden. I am now approaching the center garden, but before we get there, I just wanted to tell you all this because I keep forgetting. So these massive gardens, contain a zoo, it's that way, and it's quite big. They also contain a maze, and almost all of it are uh, free to the public. So there is one uh, small garden to the east of the palace, the, they call it the Crown Prince's Garden, um, and you do have to pay to get in and see it. I personally don't think it's worth it, so I would skip that, but I'll hopefully just remember to show you all uh, where that is when we get to the center garden. But it's not necessary. The rest of the garden is more magnificent, in my opinion. So I will see you in just a few moments when we reach the center garden. I am now entering the center garden. I'm so sorry. Uh, like I said, the sun, I think, is washing all of this out. But this, this right here is where I fell in love with Vienna on my first visit. And I mean, breathtaking. I really hope this is coming out better than it looks on my viewfinder. Um, but this is just, it's absolutely breathtaking. The center uh, manicured, beautiful, beautiful gardens. There's the Neptune fountain, which I don't think I've ever seen on. And this is my 10th uh, trip to Vienna. I usually, well, I definitely come here at least once a day. I try to come twice. Um, it is the only site in Vienna uh, that you can't really reach on foot. You could, I've walked here, but it, it's quite a hike. It's about a 15 to 20 minute uh, ride on the U-Bahn. Uh, from the center of the city. Um, so very, very close, very quick uh, trip out here and uh, it's totally worth it. And uh, I really, really love gardens. Uh, so this is quite a magnificent place uh, to come. Like I said, right here, standing right here in 2000, looking at this beautiful building surrounded by these beautiful gardens. Uh, I completely fell in love with this magical city. And now I'm gonna torture myself and I'm gonna do something I really, really don't wanna do and I'm doing it only for you. This is my 10th time. I think I just said that here. I have not done this in years. And that is hike my ass up this hill to show you the view from up there. Uh, that is the Gloriette. It is a monument on the top of the hill back there, uh, and it is beautiful. So I'm gonna suck it up. I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna be miserable the entire way up, but a vlog of Schönbrunn would be incomplete without it.
Well, that was not actually as horrible as I thought it was going to be. But here we've arrived at the top of the hill at the Gloriette. Gloriette just means pavilion built in a garden on a hill uh, with a view of the surroundings. So this was erected in... 1775 and Emperor Franz Josef used this building as a festival hall, uh, as a breakfast room. Uh, it is quite stunning. It is probably the most famous Gloria in the world. I do believe during World War II, the Allied bomb destroyed the right side of the Gloriette and it was of course rebuilt after the war, but the center and left side, I believe are still uh, original from 1775. Of course, it is flanked by uh, some statues there, uh, but it's just a beautiful building and today it does have a uh, little cafe inside so I have been in there um, you know it's a tourist trap I mean I didn't think the product was that great uh, but it was certainly a nice experience to sit in there with uh, these beautiful views uh, as your surroundings so you can see uh, down to the palace I'm gonna try to move my camera up you can see down to the palace there um, and then over uh, much of Vienna. Um, the paths coming up here, the gravel paths, are in a symmetrical, there's one on the left, one on the right, uh, zigzag pattern. And that was so the horses and carriages could uh, transport uh, the emperor up here. Uh, like me, he don't want to walk his ass up here. So uh, it definitely is worth it for the views up here. So I'm actually glad you all dragged me up here because like I said, it has been a really, really long time. Now I'm just gonna walk down right in front of this uh, pond here just to, to show you some better views of the palace. And this here is my favorite view. Um, of the of the building from the gardens. Schönbrunn often gets compared to the Palace of Versailles um, because they're both large palaces and they both contain massive gardens. And I think they both are spectacular, but I gotta give the nod to Schönbrunn uh, just because of the beautiful views and the flowers everywhere. And I am just really a sucker for the, the yellowish mustard color uh, of this building. It was mostly, I believe, constructed in the 1700s um, under the helm of Empress Maria Theresa. Um, and Versailles was definitely an inspiration. I mean, that was uh, the showcase palace. If, if a monarchy wanted to show their power, um, Versailles was the palace you looked to because you wanted to recreate that uh, so that anyone coming to your home uh, is in complete awe. And of course, uh, anyone visiting Schönbrunn uh, would be in complete awe. Um, there, down there, is the eastern part of the garden. I rarely go into it. Um, I'm just going to go into it to show you all a little something and then... I'm gonna head out, um, but the, the Eastern Garden's beautiful. It just does not have as many flowers as the uh, Western side of the garden. So let's go and I'll show you something that is a little bit odd, uh, but I think amusing uh, nonetheless, if I can find it. I am standing in front of these fantastic Roman ruins. Uh, you cannot see my face, but I'm doing the Ed Braun wink wink right now because in the 1700s, they didn't have fake handbags. They had fake Roman ruins. Uh, so this was built in 1778 uh, at a time when Roman ruins were all the rage. So uh, this would have been under Empress Maria Theresa. Uh, she reigned till 1780. Uh, so this would have been her doing, uh, but it is quite beautiful, um, even though uh, it is not an authentic Roman ruin. Uh, but I just find that a little oddity in these gardens. 
and uh, wanted to come down here and show you it all because it certainly does love, look like a ruin. So the architect did a really nice job in uh, designing this. I've arrived at my last stop today. Um, this is the Crown Prince's Garden. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, you cannot really see much of it. Uh, this is the only part of the garden that isn't free. And uh, like I said, I don't think it's worth it to spend the money uh, to come in here. Uh, but it is really beautiful and these like cast iron gates around it. I just wanted to uh, give you all uh, a quick view of this and then I am going to walk, whoops, I'm going to walk down past the palace and around out front uh, the way I came in and I will see you on uh, the other side and I will wrap this up. Uh, but please, please keep with me until the end. Thank you. See you in a minute. Thank you everyone for joining me on my morning walk through the gardens of Schoenbrunn Palace, the summer residence of the Habsburg monarchy. You will be seeing throughout the coming vlogs the winter residence uh, in central Vienna, the Hofburg Palace. It is so massive, it makes Buckingham Palace look like a teeny tiny house. Uh, so thank you so much again for watching. Please comment below, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them, but I always love interacting with you all. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.